Nervous for this one, but that's what makes it fun. And we're back. Max effort bench day today. And we are coming off of a couple really frustrating bench sessions. And what I gotta think about today, what I gotta keep in mind is number one, even though I've been working really hard on the shoulder to get the thing to work better with me, I don't wanna just assume it's gonna work. I don't want to just assume that today is gonna be smooth. I want to make sure that I'm taking my time warming up and make sure that as I work up, I'm keeping these in the pocket. Number two thing that I need to remember is that just getting to train at this point, seven months after the pec surgery, like just getting to train and actually push bench is a freaking win. And the fact that it is frustrating right now is reflective that I'm actually getting to push bench a lot sooner than I should be able to. And I gotta remember that if I am pushing bench sooner than I should be able to, it almost should be frustrating. And no matter what, like when you're coming back from something big, it is going to be a bit of a fight. It is going to be a bit of a struggle. And if you want to actually come back from it, you need to embrace that fight and embrace that struggle. So with that in mind, plan for today is gonna be similar to the deadlifts that I ran on Wednesday, where the only goal is to hit something decent keep her in the pocket and make sure that no matter where I end up today, I'm going to be able to build off of it into the meat because if I can set myself up to build into the meat, that is how we're gonna give ourselves the best chance of putting something cool on the bar. And I guess number three thing that I gotta remember is that going into this meat prep, the only goal I had for bench was just to be able to bench. So that box is already checked. Anything I do from here is bonus. So. Let's get warming up and see how okay. Fuck it, let's see how good we can make it. We're gonna make it at least decent today. And because Thumbless felt so good last week, still gonna screw with it this week. And like, definitely doesn't feel good, but it is so much freaking better than last week. And small jump, but that just means more opportunity to feel it out, more opportunity to dial it in. Nervous for this one, but that's what makes it fun.
<laughs> so I got up from that bench, and in my head, I was immediately like, fuck yeah, we're loading 385 for a triple. And then look at Darrell, and Darrell's like, you calling it there? And then I'm like, shit. <laughs> and like, every freaking part of me wants to put 385 on the bar right now. But do I need to? And this is already a huge freaking win over the last couple weeks. Huge rep PR since the pet comeback. And I know I have at least two more sessions where I can push on bench. So I think Darrell's right. We're calling her here for today on bench. But overall, like the fact that I want to go 385, even if we're not doing it, like that's big up there. So let's go. And I think we're going back to JM presses as secondary on this day. And if you guys remember when bench was rolling the smoothest, we were running a lot of JMs. It's like every time I run JMs hard, bench moves really well for me. So might as well get back on that train. But the benefit of not running them for that handful of weeks is that I've de-acclimated to them and they feel hard as shit right now, which is a good thing because it means we should be able to push them and build them up into the meat. And the reason JMs are such a good builder for my bench, like obviously they are loading the shit out of my triceps, but because I have to use my lats, use my upper back to suck my elbows down as I'm lowering the bar to keep the weight of my triceps, that is such good practice at being able to use my upper back in the way that I want to during bench to manage that position and then put the tricep loading on top of that. They just blow my bench up. All right, more overhead on an actual overhead bench, not just a really high incline. So this might suck extra compared to last week. Yeah, this is gonna suck. And I was like, do I go 70s or 75s? Decided on 70s because 70s means I'll probably be able to go up again. So let's not suck too bad at this. That feels better than the last set, actually. We're figuring it out. Okay, we're going 80s. That is the hardest part.
and we're doing some training to hug good. Definitely missing the plate loaded machine that West Coast had last week, but we definitely need some pack work. So we're in here getting some pack work in, getting a nice stretch, getting a nice squeeze. And like the weirdest thing about this is like, it feels nice and good at the top. And it's like the strength curve almost like lightens up through that range. Then it gets a little bit heavier here at the bottom. And I just wish it was like a more steady ramp through the middle. But it'll do the trick. For what we needed to do today. Go up a bit, next set. All right, round two. And the biggest thing that like the flies last week did and what these today are doing is they're giving me confidence in the pack. Cause like the left side almost feels stronger than the right on these, which is really freaking sweet. And If I can get my head wrapped around that, I should be able to start trusting it more on actual bench. That's the plan at least. And what's next is gonna be some single arm reverse pack deck. Pushed hard, pushed heavy. Don't really care how it's moving. And like the nerd in me wants to be all biomechanics-y, intense specific. But then I remember when my bench felt its absolute best, I was just moving big weights on these and didn't really give a rat's ass about the intent of the movement and on that note we're gonna definitely need to go up all right good step up on the stack oh yeah and that's the dirty feeling i wanted in the bottom there And you know, we can probably go up again. Yeah, I'll go up again. All right, last set. Dig in. And we're arm curling after this meat prep vlog is done. I think it's gonna be a Seth gets jack vlog for a little bit. So it's gonna be important that if we're gonna get jack vlog that I don't have skinny arms. So gotta pick up the slack. And the feels, single arm. I don't know why, but they're so much better for me and running a double dumbbell curl. And round two. Still trying to go for that like 
punch up a little bit, let the elbow come forward as I curl like I was last week because that tickles that sensitivity that I want to get to dial down on bench. And honestly, it makes the bicep contraction feel better too. So, win-win. <sighs> and we're squatting tomorrow, so plan was cable hip flexor raises, but cable area is occupied. So, little pink kettlebell gonna do the trick for today and really like this is mostly for the intent of freshening up the hips for tomorrow more than anything so don't need to go too too crazy probably gonna take the push hard ab work down to two days a week into the meet just to make sure that torso is nice and not totally fried for the main lifts. And this is actually like awesome for doing these because like the rack is perfect to hold down to. Gets the foot high enough off the ground that I can get full range of the hip. And there's nothing like behind me for the kettlebell to hit. So yeah, stoked. And these just feel lovely as always. And like if you got jacked up hips, Train some hip flexors because it will absolutely change your life for the better. Just make sure you ease into it so you're not totally smoking them if they are out of shape and then just ramp up over time and stuff is going to feel borderline magical for you. <sighs> and like what I want you guys to notice with these is like the pull out of the bottom is nice and slow like i'm not just kicking it up and then i'm getting a little bit of a hold at the top of each rep really trying to feel it deep inside of me because like if you're actually using hip flexors it will be pretty deep inside of you if you're feeling like in rec fam you're probably doing it wrong you want to try to like focus more like in i don't know if that makes sense but that's what i'm trying to do here <sighs> And that is that mission freaking accomplished on bench today. And like, I don't want to say that it felt good because it's still a ways off from feeling like good, good, but that is the closest it's been to good in a very freaking long time. And glad to finally pull my head up my ass and get a bench session that I can say was 100% productive in because last couple of weeks they've been stressful. Like how bad it felt in Vancouver wasn't fun. How bad it felt the week before the shoulder saver wasn't fun in the moment. But what's fun is having those sessions and being able to turn it around. And like now all I got to do on bench is just go into the next session with the same intent and not care where it ends up weight wise, care about trying to make it feel that little bit more connected, care about trying to feel that little bit more trusting of the shoulder. And again, if I can do that, it's going to be at least a decent meat day. And now I guess I gotta just get home, get some food in, get to bed and get ready to do the same thing on squats tomorrow. So guys, Thank you so much for watching. Peace out. Have a good rest of your night.